Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a two versus two on rails and metals. Yes, indeed, we'll be getting a rails and metals. And of course, this is the second episode of today. You know what, with all the 2400 subscribers again, I do apologize for not, you know, getting it up earlier. And particularly, you know, when we we're getting actually pretty quickly, pretty close to 2500 subscribers. I mean, I'm about 25 subscribers away. So, I mean, subscribe away again. Tell your friends, family, random people on the street. Perhaps not that, but, you know, tell as many as possible, you know, the existence of the propaganda cast. We shall be watching two Panzer Elite players. We shall be watching Hush Hush and Winter Leaves. Finding both of the Panzer Elite. Finding for the 116th Panzer Division. Trying to break out from the valet's pocket. Versus Bao Liang and... Bunny Wild. Yes, indeed, Bunny Wild. Of the 1st Canadian Infantry Division being supported by some random American elements. And Bao Liang showing himself as a proper American and being a complete tit. Well, certainly not very nice. Again, he might be Chinese, but again, he's playing as the American, so I suppose he's, you know, role-playing as a bastard. Who knows? Ken Crack coming in a bit under fire from engineers here. A bit quick rush again to the fuel point. Probably to the night, in case there's some Brit, you know, who t decides to place himself right here. Not uncommon in some way. Ken Crack, though, coming under rather severe engineer fire. Panzergrenadiers are arriving. More Panzergrenadiers. More Panzergrenadiers. In fact, we are seeing three Panzergrenadier squads converging. We are seeing infantry section moving out. And we are also seeing a weapon support center start. I mean, this could be a bit of a problem again. It is going to shift all the fighting over to the British infantry, which to a certain extent is great. But trouble is, Brits are a bit more suspective to attrition. I mean, if they quickly ground down, I mean, the American commander is going to be left a bit on his own without really much to do. So it is something you have to be careful about as this sort of Brit-American combination. We are seeing a heavy machine gun moving up. We are seeing an engineer squad already down, lying dead in a small trench. Not really their day. 30 caliber opening up on the exposed panzer gun. It is already there suppressing, gunning them down. And we are seeing the other guy. Winter leaves, panzer guns are being pushed back. While the 30 caliber continues on the troops inside the house with the Gewehr 43. We are seeing additional panzer guns moving on. We are seeing two Kettenkrauts, not a single Schwimmwagen. We are also seeing the munitions point right here being secured. So clearly, again, Bunny Wow is gearing up for some more serious infantry fighting. He's really going to upgrade his infantry with whatever he can get his bloody hands onto. Securing the fuel point right there, making some progress. More panzer gunners arriving. We are seeing a logistic company. Could be that Winter Leaves might be going straight for the Panzer Jäger company in this case. Which is going to shift most of the burden so far onto the shoulders of Hush Hush. And there we go. Forward barracks up. That's a bit risky. Could in fact risk, you know, losing a lot of manpower pretty there quickly. And there we go. Snipe of fire. We are seeing a snipe, of course, now from Bao Liang. Another HMG on the way. Small advances by the Americans up the west. Panzer is moving in to stop that. And Lieutenant also sneaking about. Lieutenant Upton. Continued heavy fire now towards here. Not really achieving much though. Mines going down. More cautious approach. Preparing, of course, for an immediate German counterattack. Kampfgruppe Company going up here. Hus hu at Hush Hush. I'm about to say Hus, which basically is Danish for at. Fun little fact, British troops are advancing, running into a larger contingent of Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Air Command almost done for winter leaves, in fact. Trench is going down, a further 30 calibers are advancing up. Sniper holding himself reasonably back, I think. There we go, Panzer Grenadiers sniped. Small engagement over here, infantry section fighting off against a small squad of Panzer Grenadiers. Troops here getting sniped, shot at, not looking too good for the 116th Panzer Division at the moment. Being ground down a bit, they might want to shift their focus a bit instead of, you know, just trying to strike through here, you know, strike out here and perhaps, you know, force again the Allies to spread out a bit again. Trying to spread out the player is a vital asset and then of course you can strike the sort of more weakened parts. Lining up here, Panzer Command is up. I imagine we'll be seeing an armored car anytime soon. And looks like we might be seeing a half flank of some sort from Hush Hush. And is part of the 116th Panzer Division trying to break through here. Points are being secured. 30 caliber watching over there. Another 30 caliber watching over here. Interesting enough, they're not rendering this building sort of inoperable, it looks like. I might be wrong. 
There we go, Bren guns for Bunny Wild. And there we go, in fact he is now trying to knock out this Ford Barracks. And we are seeing a mortar half truck to try and bombard the Allies out of their damned hidey holes. Ken Crowd here though suffering heavy damage. Bren guns tearing through the tiny little thing. Getting pushed back, Panzer was ready to cover it though. We are seeing a Panzer Guard here, assault, assault rifles in fact, tearing through the Bren guns. They were able to rather ambush it while the British troops were preoccupied with the Ken Crowd. Oh goodness gracious, this could be a loss for Winter Leaves. He could be losing a Panzer Guard here, squad. Oh, that was bloody lucky. Mortar half track though pulling up and getting ready to bombard the Allies' position, possibly even with some incendiary rounds. And we are seeing a trench up right here. There we go, the mortar rounds making this a very hazardous enterprise. Ooh, doing some nasty damage to the heavy machine gun crew. And we are seeing a nice little flank over here. Papantica's mine goes off as well. I think. Probably to a mortar round. Two advancing in here, getting sniped though. Heavy losses. And running straight into the hornet's nest. Except these hornets are drinking tea and talking British. And oh dear, this Panzer squad is not going to make it out of there. And this is also going to be a waste of an assault rifle squad. Oh dear, winter leaves. Why? Armor cars are arriving and they are going to be hunting down the snipers. Which is definitely going to be a bit of a problem for Baoliang again because he doesn't really have anything that can really stop an armored car at the moment. He doesn't even have infantry, which could essentially delay it a bit. So, lastly, the trick is going to be left over to try for Bunny Wild to actually contain the armored cars, which again is the sort of problem they can arise when again one side goes for the infantry, the other ones just go fully support. Again, they will have to be much more greatly connected. Again, you sort of run the risk that all of a sudden one player is broken down while the other one is fine enough, but he can't actually push on his own. And that's again, it's the sort of thing you have to be very careful about. Lots of trenches going down on these being prepared, though they're also getting mortared. Panzer is moving up, and they might want to get out of there. More mortar fire. Yeah, got nuts in there for fire. Ken Kratz sneaking up. Ooh, veteran D2 with that sniper. Panzer guys need to get out of there. Ken Kratz suffering heavily. Another 30 caliber sneaking up. Might be seeing additional armored cars up for winter leaves, and we are seeing the Panzer support command up. Probably expecting some sort of armored car. At the same time, of course, Bao Liang is going for the motor pool. He'll probably go for some armored cars himself or anti tank and to stop the armored cars of winter leaves, forcing terrible things onto his heavy machine guns. So there we go, sniper once more exposed to the armored car. Will he make it out of there? Oh dear, oh dear, will the sniper survive the encounter with the 20mm auto cannon? A most insidious foe when you're. Only protection is a uniform. There we go, the brand gun fire, tearing through it alongside some regular rifle fire. There we go, second armored car rhyming to try and mess things up for that damn sniper. And there we go, armored car escapes the range of the allies for now. Mortar rounds running with a cover fire. We are seeing Luftwaffe troops. Hush Hush has gone for Luftwaffe support, apparently. Luftwaffe troops are joining in so in the breakout, following up behind all the Panzers and their armored vehicles. Ketten crowd in trouble, and Luftwaffe troops doing what they can to right covering far alongside the armored car. The one that actually remains. More troops are moving up now, jolly good, jolly good. Mortar rounds take out a huge chunk of British troops for the fatherland and everything. Exposed a bit though in the open, British troops are slowly pushed back, 30 caliber rushing to the front line, hoping to pin down some crowds. While the Tommies are taking a flashing from the glorious Panzergrenadiers of the Third Reich. And we are seeing a nice little sneak up here trying to sort of block the main entry route with a 30 caliber. And the 30 caliber with armor piercing rounds can prove to be a problem for the armor cars, except the armor cars can just move out from window to window and just tear through the gun team. And there we go. 30 caliber number two opening up on the Panzergrenadiers. More mortar fire. That mortar half track is definitely doing a jolly good job for Hush Hush. And a T 17 armored car moving in for Bao Liang. That's not what you usually see, but it could still prove to be a huge advantage in terms of that it could, in fact, immobilize the German armor cars and even them open as targets for any sort of British vehicles. And that could, in fact, be an interesting combination. But it is going to force away the armor cars until an anti tank half track can arrive. Pushed by engineers up against here, the Luftwaffe and the remaining Panzers. Veterans, in fact, for the Luftwaffe, but they need to get out of there. Come on, Hutch Hutch! No! Oh, he lost the veteran Luftwaffe unit. That was just... Oh, no. 
T-17 has been immobilized, but it might actually get... No, it's only got a damaged engine. Might have been able to stun the light anti-tank half like Oh, Panzer is getting gunned down, cut down, in fact, on retreat. Oh, bloody hell, he just got an entire Panzer Grenade squad. Jolly hell. British are advancing as well. Mortar half like is... Oh, dear, they didn't have enough troops. Pushed in a bit too far, yeah, and they might have left their support troops without support. Oh dear, that was quite unfortunate for the Axis. In particular, Hush Hush just took a flashing there. He's lost a mortar half tack, a Panzergrenadier squad, and a Luftwaffe squad. All the martyrs are now arriving. Probably from some infantry unit, although the 116th might actually have to do with martyrs as well instead of the Panzer Force. He might not have, but anyone then could come from some other unit, for all I know. Forward supply lines are broken. Sniper fire on the Panzers and they advance, and this is rather actually a huge setback for the Axis. They're going to have to fight much harder now. Sniper fire and heavy machine gun fire. And of course that T-17 can also prove to be a huge problem as they're trying to advance. And sappers with Piats are arriving, the projector infantry anti-tank something something. I can't remember the full name. Or was it just projector anti -infantry? Yes, whatever. Was a sort of spigot or spring loaded, sort of a mortar like contraption. Anti tank, half tank out of control. Oh, hush, hush, got too bold with his light anti tank, half tank got it knocked out. But this was rather what the British had to do as anti tank weapons. It was pretty uncomfortable, not very accurate. And well, the only I advantage of it was essentially it could fire over, it, at least in company use, can fire over car. But I mean, otherwise, in the actual war, it didn't leave smoke. But heavy losses right here, the assault did not function well. And. <laughs> The problem really is for the Axis, currently, is that their forces are not geared up for an assault. They're geared up for harassment, mobile actions, but they're not really geared up for a direct assault. They need armor, Panzer IV, or a lot more Panzer Gunners with some increased squad sizes, which is certainly something that Mr. Winterleaves could, in theory, get. But of course, the question is, will he bother? In which case, he's also going to need inf you know, incendiary grenades. We are seeing the Brits digging in here, Lieutenant Upton hiding in the trench. Carefully expecting it for any sort of un-British things like coffee. Weapon supports are still blinking. We're still seeing a lot of support units out of Baoliang. I'm not entirely liking this anti-tank guns again. He's nice to see he's supporting his teammate, but he's you know also going to need something in case of the full pressure isn't on the shoulders of Bunny Wild, the Wild Bunny, who took the on the Hun. But at the last stages of the war, got captured and turned into a nice rabbit stew. Additional Luftwaffe troops are being rushed in. We are seeing another mortar half tank to provide fresh artillery. Armor car moving in, and of course, question is: Does how should I have access to Panzer Force? In which case, you might actually want that. And there we go. The mortar half tank is ready. T17 moving up though. Intercepting several Panzers out in the open. Could gain another level of veterancy if he's not careful, Mr. Hush Hush. T17, though, was not really heavily used by the Axis. Oh, Marder gets up a shot. Well, not by the Americans. I mean, not the Axis, but the Americans. The British were the ones that largely used the T17, in fact. Since the Americans were quite happy with the Greyhound. And we are seeing a Bofors going up. That's going to definitely make an infantry assault, which again could prove to be a huge detrimental thing right there for Winter Leaves. Plus, there's also his armored cars. Of course, the Marders theoretically could deal with it, but again, there's also anti tank guns. A direct assault here is going to need a lot of artillery before it's going to be any sort of sensible bit. And interestingly enough, the Allies have not bothered securing this victory point. And in fact, the right flank is also incredibly exposed. This could be a nice move as well for the Axis to attack on. I mean, I wouldn't suggest a frontal assault, I wouldn't suggest either up here, perhaps also trying to strike out the command trucks. Or perhaps, you know, right along the right flank and then going through here and sort of flanking the main, main position. What they should not be doing is, of course, taking through the center, down the main road, where all the defenses are, all the anti tank guns, heavy machine guns, ball force AA guns. I mean, that's just suicidal. Armor car takes a nasty hit from the 57mm gun. Incendiary rounds the right. Oh, it misses! Gunthuffer! Heaven's sake! Aim! Corp, upgraded defensive corp, up operations. 
Audio is acting up a bit, my apologies. Not entirely sure what's going on, but we are seeing defensive operations up, that's good. Might be seeing increased squad sizes, we are also seeing the scout cars up to increase the amount of resources they can, which is a bit limited since they've you know, been pushed back. Motor rounds bombarding T-17, sneaking in a bit, doing a bit of reconnaissance, a bit of harassment, that is good. Building here a bit close, collapsing though, careful, careful, T-17, in fact, seems to be doing a lot of that. Oh my goodness, Panzer gun it is! Evacuate! Oh! Bugger, that was just... Ow! And now that T-17 actually has more health than the Greyhound, I believe. That is actually a bit unfortunate right there for... Hush Hush, I believe, whose troops it were, residing in the old empty barn, which is now but an old empty ruin. Looks like the British are lining up for an assault. No rifle grenades to sort of really push against dark in infantry. Mortar round continuing to bombard here. Mortar after though pulling back, already exposed. T-17 adding in. Cromwell command tanks. Some Cromwells would also be a nice idea. Luftwaffe troops have been exposed. Armor cars nowhere to be seen. A nice big British push. Nothing really to hold them back. No large infantry forces. Increased squad sizes as predicted are up. And that of course means a lot of assault rifles right there. Luftwaffe troops getting hit on the retreat. German armor slowly pulling away, T-17 moving in for the more squishy bits that can actually damage the infantry, or the motor rounds are actually damaging it. Anti-tank gun sneaking up, but again we could be seeing a large panzer grenadier assault, which could in fact hit any exposed anti-tank guns. And the British are hunting down the Mart of Free. And Panzers are moving in. Oh, they are in fact clearing out the anti-tank gun. They could in fact seize this. And of course, due to increased quarters, they could in fact recruit easily without losing the entire squad. And immobilized T-17. Marta Free though, lost. Anti-tank gun though, it's recruit. Panzers need to get out of there. Ooh. Veteran T-2. And there we go, T-17 down, Panzers could be dealing rather swiftly with this British horde if they choose the right positions. Assistance from Hush Hush with Luftwaffe and whatnot moving in. No doctrine as of yet for Winter Leaves. There we go, charging in, remember to stand still. Artillery getting called in, oh the pandemonium right on the British as they're retreating out. Oh, that was officer, so the Canadian infantry has gone for Royal Canadian Artillery, but that was pretty close having hit themselves. But the anti-tank gun is now in the deft hand of solid Panzer Grenadiers. Which should definitely make it a lot more painful prospect now for the Allies to assault. The rest are reinforcing. Cromwell still no further armor there. We are seeing a tank devil going up for Bao Liang. Still no sign of infantry at all. Not a single sign. Not even a medic station. Instead, the British armed with a casualty clearing station nicely close to the front. We are seeing fireflies to deal with armor, but I think the main problem is rather going to be all the German infantry. To be honest, we are not actually seeing an awful lot of heavy German armor. Any panzers, that is. Just a few gepanzer de Schittenpanzerwagens of different models. Armor um, cars and oh dear, this mortar half tank might be lost. Retreat. Come on, hush, hush. Retreat. Pull back! Pull back! Come on! Oh dear. And there we go, Mortar half tech lost again. Not well handled there, I would argue. First tank destroyer moving in. And the British are making ready for another assault. Panzer is charging forward here. Running off some small reconnaissance section. Again, the axes are a bit pulled back. Looks like they might have lost steam initiative or something else. Or whatever you'd like to call it. Vickers also in fact protecting this right flank and the victory point right there. And that's definitely going to limit the Allied... I mean the Axis field of operations sort of successfully. I mean it looks like the British are making another push. And again, Axis do not really have a lot to sort of really contain it. Getting more martyrs. But again they need something to deal with this British infantry. In which case once they've dealt with that then it's pretty much goodbye for the hours because without that they really don't have anything sort of mobile to really contain anything. Some minor losses there and... Right there, Vickers machine gun catching several Panzer Grenadiers out in the open from Winter Leaves. Yeah. 
And there we go, full retreat. And another Panzer Jäger in Marder 3. We have eliminated the enemy once more. Ooh, another sniper down again. Bao Liang really should consider getting some infantry to help with the pushes. Instead, he's getting Calibes again. He's fully dedicated to support. He has absolutely no real initiative of his own. He really can't attack. He can't really explore anything, even if he wanted to, really. And again, that's going to hurt them both. Because again, that leaves all the fighting again. Two bunny wilds, infantry, and again, that rather means as soon as that gets ground down, it's going to give the Axis some time to recover and attack. Again, Armor Carlos, though. Panzer is advancing, heading mines, mortar rounds clearing out squads. Oh, goodness gracious, let's return though to Bao Liang, who has gone armor, who's got absolutely no infantry again. He's fully gearing up for support. And a Calliope barrage actually stops Panzer from reinforcing. Tank destroyers are moving up. And another half track is lost. Not looking too good for the Axis at the moment. And who knows, they might still win this. <laughs> In fact, it looks pretty well like they might. Enemy unit down. But what is this? Panzer Kampfwagen 5. Panzer arrived. The armor has finally arrived for the Panzer Elite. The 116th Panzer Division finally getting some armor on the field. So hopefully also a bit more deftly push forwards. Anti-tank gun in a slightly awkward position, not really their support, but there we go. Tank destroy getting attacked by Panther. And definite Ooh, trying to get the mortar half tank. They're definitely focusing those out. Tank destroy out. Oh, another mortar half tank out of control. Hush, hush. And these engineers could also be losing their lives. Yes indeed. Executed. Practically. And we're in fact seeing another Calliope already out. But who knows with the Panthers things might change a wee bit. Fireflies aren't really doing much though. I mean, he's got a ton of them but he can't really do much with them. And he's not... Oh dear! You've got a Cromwell command tank yet you're not keeping it close to your Fireflies. I mean... They gain a huge advantage. I mean, they shoot faster, farther. I believe they even get more penetration. Again, fireflies really shine with a com Cromwell command tank. I mean, really, to not use those in combination is a bit bloody silly. But honey, now Panthers anti-tank and Snoomers more. In fact, have been recruited. Calliope power sort out the first one. And second one also cleared out. Americans are suffering heavy losses though. Engineers, support teams going down. Both of us though saves the day, forcing away those Panzer Grenadiers, those silly, silly Panzer Grenadiers. But for how long? Panthers though are going to need some repairs. We are seeing the Luftwaffe moving in to quickly put them together. I suppose they might have a small advantage when it comes to repairing Panther engines as well. The Panther engine was actually an aircraft engine, if I'm not mistaken, which also led to a bit of a problem with some models, since if they tipped at a certain angle, the engine would burst into flames. So, yeah. Lots of fun little details there. Lots of engineers for Bao Liang, still no infantry. Lots of Calliope barrages, again lots of support but no real push. Panzer is here not really getting hit at all, the building is rather nicely covering them by the looks of it. Although the buildings themselves might be regretting that. And 30 caliber recruited by Winter Leaves turning the American 30 caliber Browning against its former owners. Oh bloody hell never mind, Calliope! Tearing through the gun crew. Anti-tank gun crew was in fact annihilated. Tank destroyers are moving in to try and perhaps receive because this could result in a follow-up assault with Panthers. And what is this? A flak 88 is up. That's definitely going to make any further assaults a bit more difficult, in particular again because they're lacking infantry. 
They've got lots of artillery, lots of support assets, but not a lot of real, you know, attack power. Then again, if the Allies can just hold on to the victory points, they could still win this, but again... Problem is, they have a large force which is rather more suited, you know, for reserves or attacking, parts of it at least. But, I mean, they're just in it around one point again. The other fellow can't really react so much. And again, he needs all the conflicts. I mean, not really the best setup from the Allies all of a sudden. This could be where the Axis return with a vengeance. But let's go have a look at Bonnie Wild. Patrick's. Oh my goodness, just getting blasted to bits. Flag 88, though, joining in the fun. I think. Artillery. Also adding in now. A Hummel has arrived! It's 150mm gun- OH MY BLOODY HELL! I mean that just went 8 British troops and British infantrymen. And I think one sapper squad in fact just got completely evaporated. But now we're seeing Priest joining in- oh my goodness this is just going to turn into an artillery fest. Priests are now joining in the Calliope's versus the Hummel. Oh dear, the carnage is going to be great. And the Luftwaffe are equipping themselves rather heavily with Piet, just in case. German target. German target. And Ken... No, that was not a Kingrat, that was an Armand Car. Not sure why it rushed in there. Got absolutely blasted to bits by a fusillade from... Fusillade. From the Fireflies, all three of them. Quite a bit of anti-tank firepower, by the way. divisions are down to 200 points. And more artillery. Looks like against the flak, surprisingly enough. No? Hmm. 30 caliber has a nice covering position there, allowing German infantry to advance up the western flank. Although, again, the Bofors is the major problem. It needs to be dealt with. And there we go, Mount of Free moving up. Could be trying to do that with its pack 40 gun. No, the flak finishes job getting veterans in the process. We are seeing a push by the Allies up in the rest right flank. Panthers and Luftwaffe move in to interject, in fact. But the Fireflies actually change path and full retreat. Heavy Calliope barrages for things back. Tank destroyers moving up on the right with Allied War Machine on. Tank destroyer out of control. Oh my goodness. Might be, in fact, going for the Hummel. Two tanks were so lost instead, just gaining vet further veterans. In fact, for the Panzer Elite. Oh dear, this one's still driving about. Oh, there we go. Actually, blew up before the Allied war machine ended. Machine gun emplacement to protect here. Axis are draining a victory points, but still looks like they have the upper hand now. The initiative looks to have been rather definitely been drained out of the Allies. And artillery fires in another volley from the Hummel. Getting more kills. Slit trench is getting ready. And the flag again, they're not really doing much to sort of really properly attack and knock it out. Again, one proper infantry assault, and the Allied Axis wouldn't really be able to do much, but again, it's just not happening. And the priest bellows a response to the Hummel. Panthers moving in, they're probably going to clear up the eastern half. Will the Fireflies react? I mean, right here, the Fireflies could definitely win, in particular with Tank Destroyer support. But it, yep, yes, there we go, there we go. Panzer Gunners are moving in to intercept Tank Destroyer's also arriving sniper fire. And more Calliope's just hammering away at the flak. Panthers coming under heavy fire, Tank Destroyer's and the Fireflies. Still, the Cromwell is not helping the Fireflies. Again, it is absolutely unbelievable. Again, the advantages a Firefly get from a Cromwell command tank are pretty much something you must get. I mean, if you have it, use it. Trust me. Fireflies become that much better if supported by a command tank. 
More artillery fire, trench stopped. And the Hummels just keep on hummeling. In fact, I've gained veterans one soon. And Bergatik actually recovering now. Jolly good. Jolly good. This is mean fact hum mortar half tanks are getting back on the job. Analysts are still holding on to two victory points, so things are getting a bit more difficult again. They are now the targets themselves again. They have lost the initiative and they really need to gain it, but they're not really quite succeeding at it. Even with all the artillery. Panthers getting repaired, already one veteran C2, jolly good. Heavy losses to the British troops moving about here, and another volley. And the flak finally gets sorted out. And offensive veteran C1 for the Hummel. Butterfly bombs, he even has access to faulty megas, but he's not really using it. He's Still has some infantry though, and there we go, Panthers moving in, but I might suggest more infantry. Perhaps dropping in some 40 megas to... Oh, never mind, too many snipers. And there we go. A bit too much fire for the Panthers, pulling back, also fireflies. Ooh, artillery! More Hummel fire, pretty much sorting out that anti-tank gun. Panthers are still retreating though. Come on, don't be a coward. Not sure why the Panther is moving in, they still... Oh, they had to repair the Panther because the Vickers machine gun emplacement is still up. Holding on to the western half. Oh, he set up a flak filling, in fact, to protect against infantry incursions. Pretty rare, actually, see nowadays a flak filling being built, but that's not a bad idea. And already they have secured two kills. Hooray for Hush Hush and his flak filling crew. <laughs> Hip hip hooray! Panzer is pushing in, and in fact, just beyond the range of the Vickers. Oh, tank destroyer though, rushing in, trying to crush as many poor Panzers, but not before they get some engineers. Not sure why they're firing away. Oh, anti tank grenade, but still, they have to be careful. There we go, and the sappers are going to run through a hailstorm of automatic fire. Anti-tank guns moving up, but it's not going to be helpful. Again, infantry could have helped here a bit. No further troops getting hammered. With fire, fly, fire. Snipers moving in, clearing out the crew of the flak and anyone trying to support it. Forward barracks up in an old shed. Fireflies rushing in. Trying to crush as many panzers as possible. Again, they're lacking the sort of bit for killing the infantry. Again, a nice assault by winter leaves. Never mind, he could easily get off a few anti-tank grenades if he hadn't used them all on that tank destroyer. But still, could do a lot of damage. But they might want to consider getting out of there now. Lots of getting crushed. Still, they have managed some nasty losses. British moving forward under heavy, intense artillery fire against the Axis positions. Hummel, the returning fire. 16 kills, even. And an armor kill as well. And the casualty team station went down to the almighty Hummel. Panthers moving forwards. The carnage. The carnage. Both Panzers getting buttoned up. Why is the Cromwell still not supporting those fireflies? By Jove. Why is it not happening? He could have gotten probably one Panther right there with that on. Instead, one Panther veteran is really looking tank to actually get out of there. Also fun to note he's actually gone offensive veteran. See, that's also increasing not just the accuracy and sort of things of the gun, but also the machine gun. Instead, one firefly has actually turned to a crisp. And of course the baggage, he gets on the spot to repair. Panzer is pushing up, forcing away the snipers, anti-tank controlling up. Still no infantry from Baoliang, still not a single tank either. In fact, the tank right there early on would have stopped all those Panzers as well. Anti-tank gun moving up. 
a bit of quiet all of a sudden. But again, the Allies have completely lost all momentum. And again, the artillery is not really doing much anymore. And the Hummel just responds with counter artillery fire. Ooh, doing quite a bit of damage to the Calliope's, in fact, but they again, what to expect with a 150mm shell. And here's the thing, though, about the Hummel. It can do a lot of damage. It can, but there's a slight detail. It's pretty inaccurate, and it only fires four shells. So, I mean, there's a sort of, you know, downside to it. Again, it's not always, in fact, going to hit your target at all. But when you do, I mean, you can expect something to happen. That's for sure. More butterfly bombs being dropped down. More artillery fire against the flag, not against the axis attacking. Which I do think is a bit of a mistake. Sabbath being run off. British infantry, or at least what remains of it, seemingly hiding. Might in fact have gone down to heavy Hummel artillery. And the Hounds are just having a nice little picnic before opening up with another devastating barrage. Looks like a Calliope is trying to move up to either damage the base or try to catch a Hummel. No, he's actually trying to devastate Winter Leaves Panzer Gunners. Cheeky devil. And another volley from the Hummel right on the Calliope. I think Panther's also moving in. Tank destroyers just charging in, field repairs up, going in after the Panther Veteran G2. <coughs> ODN looks like the Panther's getting outmaneuvered by the Clive is hitting its own armored vehicles. Oh dear, what's going on? This is just terrible. And we are seeing the Luftwaffe joining in with a bit of strafing runs. Panther goes providing line of sight. Oh dear, and the Priest is gone. Panther moving in once more, and more veterancy for the Hummels. And another tank destroyer out of commission. The Panthers advance continue. The march of the 116th as he tried to break out, and a sniper just got blasted to bits. Panther though proceeds to miss a much larger target. They should be much laughing about this back in the barracks. If they ever reach it. Panzer goes falling up. Oh my goodness! Artillery just knocked out that half track. Has he secured himself another priest or what? What's going on here? Looks like a creeping barrage. Bloody hell. The enemy is weakening even now. And there we go. The thing that killed the mortar half track. German assault continues. Now we are in fact seeing 40 megas from Hush House trying to aid in. Where are the Panthers? There's a martyr in fact joining in there. Panthers moving up, clearing out any infantry on the flank. Fireflies are quite exposed. Anti tank gun gets caught out in the open. This is complete chaos for the Allies. Anti-tank gun sorted out, in fact, could be recruited by the Axis. Again, where are the Panthers? Or Cindy Hunters? Hunter? Piet obtained by the Fulgium Jaeger. Getting off a nice hit on the M10. And more artillery from a Hummel. Oh, direct hit, absolutely shattering the M10. Oh, nice hits against the Firefly. He's finally getting something out of the Cromwell, but still, he hasn't bloody used it. I mean, really, move it. Just, you know, use the follow command. And you're not exactly expected to... 
execute Operation Barbarossa right there. Damage engine on the Panther. Oh yeah, this could be. Oh, and Baggage got lost. Hummels are not in a good condition either, but they're still ready to fire, still ready to devastate the Allies. Let's return to the Allies. And more heavy Hummel fire. Oh! Nasty hit right there on the engineers. Not just the day of the engineers though. Not at all. Kaleib is actually trying to deal with the German infantry. The Fulgy Megas more specifically. Not really having much luck. And there might even be Hummel fire directly against the Calliope's, but I don't think it will hit. Then again, Bao Liang has placed himself in a terrible position. He's also floating a ridiculous amount of munitions and fuel, but again, he can't really use it. Because again, he didn't really choose a doctrine that would help push as such. Again, he went for a rather untenable po support left. position again, where he probably should have had something to push himself. I mean, had he gone for infantry or... Airborne, he'd been able to do a lot much more in this game, but he didn't. And that is in fact punishing. Looks like we are seeing additional armoured forces moving up. From the 116th Panzer Division, another pair of Panthers. Another Calliope Barrage, but again I do get the feeling it's a bit too little too late. Still not a single infantry unit out from Bao Liang. More artillery fire, ever more. Oh goodness gracious, unit just got absolutely vaporized. Might have been sector artillery, might have not been. Enemy unit down. And the Kettenkrad got spotted and knocked out by the anti-tank gun. Small effort I suppose. Now the Axis just needs to keep on pushing. Oh dear, recovering one panther that was actually lost. So much for that kill. The British achieving another assault with what is left of their meager forces. Panthers are pushing forwards. Marder free lost. Calliope fire, artillery fire, they're absolutely just trying to hammer the opponent into submission as if though they were in command of a Soviet artillery division. And Bao Liang just seems to have sort of lost it. Oh, heavy damage again to the Calliope from the Hummels and the 150mm artillery shells. Well, that seems to be about it, to be honest. Oh dear! Firefly went out of control! Simply artillery doing that! Oh dear, he could be losing another Firefly! No, but the Panthers are definitely going to take advantage of that! Four Panthers rolling into town! A solid assault force, in fact, supported by a vast wave of Panzer Grenadiers and a few Fortune Jaegers. This is pretty much the end of the 1st Infantry Division's attempt to contain the 116th Panzer Division, whatever supports it. Tearing through the base. Armor gone. And again, that Cromwell command tank never really saw any proper action, which again was a huge waste. Cromwell trying with a bit of overwatch, a few airburst shells. A uh, bit of an accident there. And another Calliope who could be going down. Panzer have essentially just torn through the entire area. Another priest gone. 
I'm a command truck gone Calliope gone and there we go headquarters command truck lost as well a fresh pair of Calliope's move in but I don't think it's going to do much Yeah, I don't really think that was as much the artillery, although that definitely helped as much as, you know, oh, I don't know, your poor strategy. But let's save that for the end bit. We have territory cut off from supply. And there we go. GG, more or less. And of course, what lost the islands of the game? No, it wasn't artillery, because I mean, if it was artillery that could either win or lose a game, they would have won, because they had a lot more earlier on. It didn't actually win the game. What lost in the game again? Poor unit composition. Again, the unit composition or force composition matters. You need forces that can actually attack. And if you have a full support force, you're rather limited in what you can do. And that was rather what cost them the game because it all then essentially came down to the shoulders of Bunny Wild. And if he couldn't attack because he'd been sort of specifically targeted out and then grinded down, the other couldn't follow up. And again, then the entire thing stalled, giving the Axis more time again to build up a larger force and attack. And that's essentially what happened. Had Bao Liang actually had an infantry force to attack and also not so many snipers who just got killed, they might actually have won. Had they had some infantry on the American side as well to push up, perhaps not gone armor put that in perhaps infantry or airborne, they might actually have won. But again, it was that essential bit of poor force composition which allowed the Axis, which did have forces both sides to attack, to exploit, to actually win this game. They were not have one side purely composed of support troops. They had support, yes, but they also had infantry. They had armor later on again. Combined arms, this is also what it's called. You know, you need not just one branch and all the support, but you also need infantry, you need armor. Only one side had that, and then again, Baoliang again, full support. He didn't even get a single tank. I mean, a single Sherman could have stopped all those Panzergrenades at least much better. But again, it didn't happen, and that's rather what lost in the game. Baoliang and him going absolutely bloody support, and then completely failing in the combined arms aspect. So there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, and if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane, saying cheers.